Greetings sailors and welcome back to all the warships and another bit of live play and this time I have been tasked <laughs> by a patron to play some older ships. I actually asked on my Patreon page uh, if there was any ships that people would particularly like me to uh, to have a, a play of and uh, well it's only been one comment so far but they asked if I could play some older ships perhaps and one of those that they listed was the Molotov and it occurred to me yeah I haven't played the Molotov in really quite a long time there are now a fair few tier 6 cruisers around even just a fair few tier 6 premium cruisers but the Molotov still does have in theory very very good guns for its tier it's also still very very squashy like a number of other tier 6 cruisers only this one isn't nearly as maneuverable as most of them so I guess we'll see how this goes. Now this is one I actually reviewed back in the day. I, I stopped doing proper ship reviews a, a while ago, but I still try and uh, give impressions of ships, even if I don't sit down with spreadsheets anymore and uh, exhaustively go through the numbers, which, to be honest, looking back at it, I don't know if that was the best way of doing things, but it was the way that occurred to me at the time. But... Uh, yeah, as as the number of ships grew, the uh, amount of information I was having to like check and recheck, and of course, you know, as uh, patches come through, changes to existing ships happen as well. So it got a bit too unwieldy, apart from anything else. But uh, even so, I still I still look back at it and think, yeah, well, probably wasn't quite the best best way of doing things. But uh, anyway, maybe p people disagree. Maybe there is somebody out there that's been watching long enough that they really list me, uh, miss me going through all of the uh, the numbers one by one and saying, ah, oh, this is, you know, it's almost as good as this ship, but not quite as good as this ship, and so on and so forth, rather than talking about the ship on its own merits. <laughs> anyway, uh, tier 7 game. This could be certainly a lot worse in terms of matchmaking. Only three cruisers, though. Lots of smaller ships. We have... Double GDs, which is never nice, and Molotov uh, does not have airdropped. So our uh, ability to deal with the double DDs is somewhat limited. Uh, now let's see, we have 4km Hydro, so let's have that. Uh, it's the same range as my torpedoes, actually. We don't really need both of those, but I guess just so I remember. And 4km AA guns, we don't need that on. Let's have the detectability by air. Not really going to make a difference in this one. There aren't any aircraft uh, that are going to be flying around and uh, uh, spotting me far away from their home ships. But, uh, you know, just... It, it might happen in the next game. I don't know. So yeah, the range on this is... Uh, pretty decent. 15.5 is is uh, okay for tier 6 and then we also have a spotter. I don't think you can have anything else in that slot. I think it is just the spotter but you do have the standard choice of hydro and defensive. Given the AA on this ship I don't think there's just any reason why you would ever have anything other than hydro. Back in today, there used to be more of a point to having a defensive on a ship with poor AA because you would have the scattering effect back in the old RTS days. It would actually make it harder for uh, enemy ships to, uh, enemy carriers to um, make a drop on you. But of course, that doesn't apply anymore. So there are some older ships like this where they have the option of defensive, but there is absolutely no point to uh, taking it anymore right uh it's been so long i don't know how much lead i need the ap should be good enough though uh, i am being targeted by somebody there we go it's the same seven inch guns that you get on the donskoy if i remember correctly these are very very good guns for the tier although uh i, I think irl the guns were a bit of a flop it was an attempt to, right, this is just vague memories of probably a Drakinafell video at some point, but uh, yeah, it was an attempt to uh, sort of bridge the gap between the punchiness of an 8 inch gun and the, the sort of better reload of a, a 6 inch gun. 
um, but it didn't really quite succeed in either fashion. But of course, these things don't really matter so much in game. In game, it is uh, a very nice gun. They have relatively flat arcs and pretty good accuracy. But of course, all of this is on a very fragile platform. One that does not manoeuvre well, unlike, say, uh, a Nuremberg or a London or... Uh, uh, what's the Tissics? I don't know why I went for the London rather than the, uh, the, the regular... Is it the Devonshire? I can't remember what the regular Tier 6 cruiser is. Right, Cashelo, you are... Maybe... Within damaging distance? Yes? Who's aiming at me? But if it's a battleship, it could be very nasty. No, it's the laser. Okay. So you really do sort of need your speed. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, the Acasta fell into the trap of must kill submarine, and uh, that did not go well for them. Uh, which is a pity, because uh, that's one of our destroyers down already. Right, uh... So it's the Kamikaze R in the cap. That might be quite difficult to win. Actually, I haven't said that. They've lost two of their destroyers already, but the Kamikaze is certainly going to be a dangerous one if played with even half a brain. Although there's always the possibility it won't be played with half a brain. One never knows. And they've also lost a... Oh, yeah, Devonshire. There's one right there. Okay, then. Right, this uh, sub is not particularly diving. Uh, KGV's being rather aggressive there. But it also, it sort of works out for me in a selfish way because it means that they're taking the focus of what's going on right now. As opposed to my squashy, squashy cruiser. Ah, it'd be nice if I could get another fire going, although I suspect the cooldown must be nearly over, if not fully over, on that uh, Colorado. Yeah, I don't know if the KGV is going to last too much longer. There's not much I can do about it. Okay. It's tempting to get a little bit closer just so I can hit stuff. Yeah, you've kind of put yourself way out in a, a bad spot there, KGV. Let's see if we can get a blind shot there. Hey, at least the Kamikaze R doesn't have homing torpedoes. God, can you imagine something like that? Um, yeah, with submarines, that's kind of what we have. Okay, the Kamikaze is going to be still spotting me. We definitely need to turn away right now. Ooh, Rush Bay. Worth going to some AP. Let's hope this doesn't hurt. Okay, that wasn't too bad. That wasn't too bad. Uh, the Grash Bay was actually one of their other, uh, this patron's one of one of their other suggestions. Uh, it's, it's always been a niche ship. I don't think it, uh, it its position has maybe changed as much as something like Molotov. There are definitely a lot more things around that uh, can maybe impact something like the Molotov rather than the... The, the, the Grash Bay having a heal at tier 6 is still uncommon. Not unique anymore by a long shot, but it's definitely uncommon. We we'll maybe sneak a shot on, on that... Uh, Sharnhorst? Grash Bay does have rather more usable torpedoes. I mean, this, you know, the torpedoes on this are all right. Uh, the damage is pretty decent, and they are, you know, at that range, the fact that the sort of average speed, 65 knots, doesn't really matter that much because uh, uh, hopefully you're not going to miss at uh, what is basically point blank range. Right, uh, I don't quite know how this is going on this flank, but we seem to be pushing in on them a, f a bit from the other side, so... Uh, as long as we don't do nothing too stupid. Oh, that's a kamikaze. It's a pity I've got the AP loaded. Uh, I'll have to guess to it. It's not a particularly quick reload. 
it is um, much more in the you know it's, it's much closer to an eight inch gun reload than a six inch gun reload I think there are actually eight inch gunships that probably reload quicker than this although there won't be many of them I think Alba does at the tier Uh, but Alba's got a, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a longish reload for uh, having uh, a, a short range versus other higher tier things that you might bump into, but uh, uh, sort of objectively in terms of it being an 8 inch gun cruiser, it's a pretty decent reload. Just to try and, I guess, make up for the fact that uh, it's not got that many guns available to it. That's a slightly awkward position. Uh, oh, a caster, you're not going to last there, are you? But it does give me some chance, some opportunity to do some damage to this highly dangerous Minikaze. I don't know that you have a... Uh, uh, <laughs> what a shame that that, wouldn't, that that doesn't do damage anymore. There we go. Yeah, not a huge amount of damage out of this one, but yet you can't... Ooh, you can't be super aggressive, because if you're super aggressive, bad things happen to you very quickly. But the last couple of ships are now just retreating into the corner, so I guess we can... Uh, push up the pace a little bit. See if we can get some more damage out of this. Still an enemy sub around. So we can get fire going on the Scharnhorst as well. Right, the Heinrich has used damage control, but I don't know if I'm in a... Actually, if I pop a spotter. There we go. Sometimes the uh, better point of view is actually quite useful. Although... Spotter point of view, the whatever you want to call that, the uh, the artillery point of view. It's all artillery point of view. It's all naval artillery. Oh, hello, submarine. All right, let's get Hydra going just now. Well, I may get to kill a sub. Who knows? Is that the laser storming towards me. Yeah, it is. Go back to AP. I think Lazo's torps are particularly any better than mine. Right, if you show a broadside, I will be very appreciative that of that potentially. Mr. Lazo. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. There we go. Gotta love those uh, those lovely laser-like AP shells. Oh no, you don't, Sunny Jim. Oh, no, you don't. Right, that's the Heinrich down. He's actually used his DCP. Ah, oh, never mind. I didn't get a chance to kill the sub, but we lived. We lived, and I think we'd have done okay XP-wise. Yeah, second place, 1400. I'll take it. I will take it. Uh, yeah, we just kind of had to hold them on this flank. They didn't push, especially despite having that uh, kamikaze. Maybe the kamikaze felt like they didn't have enough uh, support to push. I don't know. It's hard to know what it was like from their perspective. So let's give that another go. See what kind of matchmaking we get. Probably more submarines, as there seem to be more submarines than the destroyers in the queue for this range at the moment. So that's not something we ever want to see. Because at least with subs, uh, at least with destroyers, you know, they're on the surface and my guns are always going to be able to hit them if they're spotted. But that's not the case with submarines. Subs, I have to drive right over the top of the damn things. So, carrier, more double subs, bottom tier matchmaking. Here we go. This is the real stress test. 
Uh, their carrier is a Bern. Bern, however one says that, I never quite... I, I, I'm, I'm not okay with French pronunciations, but for some reason that kind of throws me. Uh, there's also Nebraska. I am a skinny ship, so Nebraska's bombs might have a harder time of hitting me. Uh, but the uh, Bjorn is uh, Bjorn. Bjorn? Bjorn. The Bjorn. Let's just call it the Bjorn. The Bjorn. <laughs> it's Swedish. It's the Swedish aircraft carrier. Uh, the yeah, it's it's got uh, uh, skip bombs and rockets if memory memory serves. Also, very long-lasting fighters. The fighters are the gimmick of that thing. Right. Uh, okay. Got a salmon ahead of us. It's actually only one destroyer per team. It's much more battleship heavy, so it's more of a hostile environment this time. Same number of cruisers. Fewer destroyers, more big big guns. And the big guns are the ones that will smack you good and proper, so uh, yeah, I definitely want to be cautious. It's also a three cap circle rather than the four cap circle variant of this map. Uh, which I think I prefer to be honest. The four cap circle variant you just get sort of a bit of a standoff and it can often be whoever has more of an influence around the B cap can then sort of do things around the middle and yeah that, that, that can be the tiebreaker as it were. So if you're in that position and you get a team that really doesn't want anything to do with a B cap then uh, you can just end up getting bottled up. And it's not very pleasant. Right, I might be able to use these ions. One of the disadvantages of the uh, the flatter shell arcs uh, on uh, like it has its advantages. Absolutely has its advantages, but uh, it also means there are plenty of islands that you have to be quite far behind to actually use. Can't park yourself up like an Atlanta. Okay, the salmon is still on the surface, clearly, if they're camping. Uh, either they've left or they've submerged. I think they've probably left. Okay, let's use this spotter. Do a bit of... Uh uh, what's the, there's a phrase for it, basically, like opening fire to see who fires back at you. It's like scouting by force or scouting by fire or something like that. See what kind of response you provoke. Okay, there's nothing here then. Yeah, actually, <laughs> we're too close. Uh, not a lot of sign of enemies on this flank so far. They're more gone for the C cap, the B cap perhaps? Lost their Asashio as well, which doesn't bother me so much, but it'll be a relief for our destroyers. Uh, not destroyers. Uh, <laughs> battleships, I can tell the difference. Okay, Nuremberg. I would like to use my AP on the Nuremberg. Well, let's see if we can get this Bayern to catch fire first. I do have the advantage of playing this with a very good commander, of course. 21 point uh, Kuznetsov. Bayern's firing HE, not sure why. If we get to take out their tier 8 sub here as well, that would be jolly useful. Okay, we, we might get a chance to go for a sub this time, although it's probably more likely to be me spotting for my allies dropping on the sub. Seeing as how I have to play like an oversized destroyer if I want to. Oh well, never mind, didn't even get close. Okay, that Nuremberg's got to be sweating right now. No, I would be. Eh, not that consequential. Five over pens. I think I was aimed a little bit high. But 
that's fine. Still quite a few of the enemy we haven't spotted yet. Uh, this is most of our team down here, so I wonder if it's most of their team up there, but surely more of them would be spotted by now. Don't know. I guess we'll see soon enough. Uh, what haven't we seen? The Nebraska we haven't seen. And the other two cruisers are up there. Bismarck, Nuremberg. Okay, so... I think it's just the Nebraska and the Carry that actually haven't been spotted, and their other, their other um, submarine. I keep wanting to call things destroyers that aren't destroyers. Right, there's the Bismarck. Please don't target me, Bismarck. Yes, he's going to target me. Okay, let's let's get ourselves unspotted. There's incoming high explosive. Okay then. Let's see if we can get fire going on the Bismarck. You're allowed to fire at other things, Bismarck. The perils of being a low-tier cruiser. Oh no, he is firing at other things. That's uh, fine by me. The Nuremberg firing at me, at least it's sort of, you know, a matchup of equals. Right, you're just trying to run Nuremberg, and I don't blame you. Although if I were him, I would not be opening fire right now. But maybe he's just like, I want damage! Okay, well, we've bled them a little bit. They're four ships down, including their Asashio, which was probably the biggest threat to our battleship. So, uh, yeah, this has been a bit of an odd game, really. Well, there goes our Sinyang. Um, yeah, once the Bismarck goes down, that'll just leave the Nebraska, which uh, is kind of squashy, as we saw in my video. That big old flight deck. Uh, it is not a tanky ship, even remotely. Now here's where the longer reload, like the Nuremberg is definitely at an advantage here in terms of manoeuvrability. Uh, yeah. And being able to fire a lot faster. And, of course, it's got that uh, turret arrangement with two-thirds of its firepower being at the back as well, which is quite advantageous for situations like this. I think we'll just stick with HE. It's probably better. If you really did want to run away, then you would just go dark and uh, run towards your allies. Okay, let's go AP. Let's see if I could knock out his steering, maybe. Oh, never mind. Yeah, I really didn't do any substantial damage to that guy, but uh, yeah. There's going to be less damage overall this game, I think. Okay. Well, we don't have to worry about them firing from our flank anymore. This is the kind of game where, even when I'm just playing by myself, I'm happy if I manage to, you know, just, like, survive. Uh, I do wonder if their Nebraska has... I, and again, I was talking about this in the Nebraska video, you know. Like, one of the potential downsides of a line like that is people will just forget that they have guns and play them as an inefficient carrier. And, uh, that's... That's definitely going to be to the detriment of your team if you're playing that way. That doesn't help anybody. Oh well, at least we're fast. Molotov is pretty good in a straight line. I've got the Sierra Mike flag going. So we're within spitting distance of 38 knots, which is 
pretty good for a cruiser. In fact, we might even make it to 38 knots. Okay, there's the Bjorn. The Bjorn. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that Nebraska hasn't, like, they've not been, I don't even know. Downside of the, uh, the French aircraft carrier that is there, uh, is that, uh, it, it is hideously slow. The French naval, naval aviation didn't really, uh, become a proper thing until post-war. Uh, we had a whole, uh, there was a, a, an episode of the podcast we did where, uh, well, when that came out where we covered it and uh, Drac talked about it a bit and uh, the reason why the, the French, you know, they built that and then that was kind of it for a really long time and the fact that it, even as they built it, it had a very short life as an actual aircraft carrier and spent most of World War II basically being a uh, a ferry. Um, yeah, it was basically money. <laughs> money, and then World War II got in the way, and so that was that. So yeah, any uh, French aircraft carrier tree would have some highly speculative designs. Yeah, this is just mopping up at this point, and I'm just trying to hoover some damage out of this this carrier. It's a mercy killing, you guys. It's a mercy killing. I might get a, ch a chance to shoot at the Baltimore, actually. Oh, hello. Yeah, there's the... Uh, the bombers. Any more damage? Although he did put a fire on me. Right. Oh, they're just slightly out of... Uh, that's annoying. Slightly out of range. Is it AP bombs or not? It might be AP bombs actually. Get to see the non existent AA in action. I don't think they like me very much, but I have been uh, firing at them since they were spotted pretty much. There you go, and that all missed, for, fortunately for me. Yeah, it's not much fun being a tier 6 uh, CV in a tier 8 game. It does rather sharply limit what you can do. Oh, oh, oh! Yeah, we ninja the kill! Okay. <laughs> We've ended up with almost as much damage as last time, but uh, yeah, I think I was along for the ride, really. A lot of it was farmed from that uh, unfortunate enemy aircraft carrier. Oh, this Nebraska's been super shy about engaging. To the detriment of their team. But they are going to get to live, sadly. I don't think we can uh, manage to kill them in time. Can I even get in range in time? Guess we'll see. Also, Peaceful Hippie. That's, that's a slightly ironic name for a game like uh, World of Warships. But better than out being an actual, you know, sailor type person shooting at enemy ships, what with it being a game and all. So, only mildly ironic, I suppose. There we go, we broke 60k. So, yeah, you're never going to be the hero of the show with a matchmaking like that when you're in something like the Molotov, but uh, the guns are still more than good enough. They are very, very good guns for tier 6, it's just it's on an incredibly fragile platform that requires a lot of uh, caution to use, which can obviously, you know, sometimes hold you back in terms of uh, 
potential to do damage but you know if somebody decides to focus you if they've got big guns then it can all be over very very quickly so that's the molotov um yeah the guns still hold up really really well and uh neither of those matches was particularly challenging so uh we didn't get to see what it was like truly under duress but uh it it absolutely could have been a situation where a battleship just got lucky and got multiple citadels on me and that was that game over so uh yeah that can absolutely happen as well this is hardly a 100 percent representative look at this ship it's just two matches where we happen to be on teams that uh reasonably easily beat the enemy teams so that's it for this recording hopefully you enjoyed it and if you did you can do all the usual things down underneath the video and of course as always stay tuned for more